uh, I really like showing this friend wheel because number one, I just think it's really pretty, but on, I, I think it also has some really valuable information. So along the outside of the circle are individual names, and these were pulled from one of my social networks. And the lines on the inside of the circle show the connections that my networks have to each other. And so the top half where the lines are really thick and it's, you know, full of color, those are all people who know one another. And my guess, if I were to look at these names really specifically, it's people who live in the same space in the same town or people who use, you know, whose offices I used to work in, you know, and those people see each other all the time every day. And that's why those lines are so overlapped and linking. But what's really interesting is this bottom level. Hey there, if you're just joining us. Um, this bottom level of names um, where there aren't a lot of links in between. And I think those names come from uh, the travels that I've been on and the conferences that I've attended that have been out of town. And I'm sorry, I've just got a call waiting, bing, dinging in my ear. <laughs> so wild, so the technology. Um, and so those are the networks, the, the ones on the bottom that open me up to a whole new sphere of people that I haven't had access to before personal relationships or personal introductions to. And so that's where a lot of the, um, my focus is in developing and deepening those relationships. That's why I show you that. So these are the areas, you know, where you work, where you live. Those are the really traditional uh, definitions of who's in your community. But I think now it's who you're connected to and who influences you. And those can be much, much broader defined, you know, whether it's authors or people that you're following their blogs or their podcasts or even watching TED Talks or things. Um, I don't know if you're all familiar with TED.com, but they have these... 20 minute videos of the best, the people that are the best in the world at what they do, doing presentations on every topic imaginable. And their, their byline is um, ideas worth spreading. And to me, it's, that has replaced watching TV because that's who I want to be influenced by and that's the kind of input I want. And so I just share that as a way of reaching out and broadening your community. Um, with, with some pretty significant players. And then there's this idea, Franklin Covey brought this up in his book, this prioritization matrix um, in the Seven Habits book. And I think it's really important for business because until we step out of our work and look at how we work, not just what we do, um, we get caught up in the urgent. You know, that's people calling and emailing and screaming and yelling and you know, this is due and there's that deadline and this has got to get done. Um, but it's this important, not urgent area where networking, I think, falls into or should fall into. Um, too often, I think it falls under the urgent, you know, like people get laid off or, you know, they start seeing cash flow go down and they start to get desperate and nervous. And that has a, an energy to it, you know, you could say. Um, and people feel it when you're needy or when you ask for something without giving something first or without first earning that right to ask a favor or to, you know, ask for an introduction. Um, and it's really uncomfortable. And I think that's where the old mindset of networking was, you know, um, taking without giving first. And so this new model of building relationships and building your community takes the urgency off of it, but keeps the importance. And so that's what's really um, key. And so when people tell me that they're practicing talking about themselves or their company or their products, you know, I often ask them, when are you practicing and with who are you practicing? Because um, a lot of times, you know, they're waiting to really share what they do with the ultimate customer or the big client. And, you know, I, I, I dissuade that because there's so much pressure and it has so much urgency to it um, and people feel that. And so 
this is another uh, data graph from the survey that I did. And I see that the people are using the women's socials to, you know, possibly find cl clients and prospects and business associates. Those two are the first two um, graphs on the left. Um, but it, not as significantly as I thought. You know, the, the blue shows a few, that they've met some clients and business associates. Definitely not finding employees. You know, that was pretty uh, clear from the day, from the people who responded. Um, but then the friends and colleagues and the resources in the community, that really surprised me that those were the keys that people were looking for in networking. And it, it surprised and kind of delighted me that that's, um, the mindset, because it, I think it shows in the attitude at the events. And it, it again, it takes it out of the urgent and puts it in this non-urgent where you're building relationships along the way. Um, and so networking to me shows up in three different modes. And also I'll talk about these, the in-person, in-print, and online. And the arrows just show that they work in both directions and in all ways. And I'll talk a bit about that. But first one is really easy, the team you, like where do you show up in person? And most people think about, you know, work and conferences and meetings as networking events. But uh, I think I should be the poster child for the coffee shop because I go there every day I'm in town. And, you know, people joke and tease me. It's like, oh, when do you ever work? It's like, well, I get work from going to the coffee shop. And that's a different mindset. Um, I had a meeting there this morning, yesterday, um, a financial advisor to a couple different startups asked if he could introduce me to a couple of his clients. And the day before, day before someone asked me if I would speak at their, their, their group meeting, you know, in the fall. So to me, it's just my networking opportunity and it's casual. It's informal. That's my style. But everywhere I go, I travel with my business cards. I have some marketing materials with me you know I have something everywhere I go because everywhere I go I'm representing myself and I think that's you know without having these traditional jobs of the past and I don't know if you have them but I I think you know we're representing ourselves more and more out in the world um, everywhere we go and so the next mode of networking is this in print so what does your business card say about you? And what other materials do you have? Is your product something visual? Could you make a book, or postcards, you know, the branding, if that's easy for you to put on everything. Um, what makes you memorable, or your organization or your group? Um, people love the stories and, and photos and videos show the stories, you know, anything you can put in somebody's hand is so powerful. Um, I was just featured in the Ventana magazine in June, as well as the Ojai one. And what I did was I um, wrote notes to past clients of people that have hired me to speak at their conferences. And, you know, I wrote them a little conversational notes like, hey, I just was featured and I thought you'd really enjoy seeing this. I hope you're well, you know, would love to hear about next year's lineup. And um, it's something I can put in their hand. And it's this third person um, credibility that's built when you're written about. And whether that's, you know, in the paper, or in a local magazine or somebody's blog, if you can print it out and, and mail it, it, it lingers longer than emails and newsletters that, you know, are so easy to delete or file away, you know, till you have time. Um, and then the third one is kind of the Wild West, this online, uh, all of these different social media sites. And